Hi, thanks for watching. Please remember to like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel and to click the notification bell. So this is one of three videos I've got round windows. In this particular video, I'm going to replace this wooden bay window for a UPVC bay window. Uh, but I've also got another video where I'm just changing normal casement windows. And then I've got another video where I'm putting in a uh, um, French door. So um, if you're looking for a particular type of video uh, or window that you're going to be fitting, just have a look at, have a look at them. Or if you sort of watch all three, I'll probably talk about different aspects across them. So, And then as well as that, if you go on our YouTube channel, click on the videos, you see I've got a series of basically every DIY job I do in the house. So as we do a little job in the house, try to get a bit of video of it, just so you can see. Um, there's about maybe 40 odd videos on there, and going forward every time I do anything, I put a video on there. Um, but like I say, this particular video is around the bay window. So I'm going to start by taking the existing bay window out. Um, this, this house, like I said, it's, it's getting fully renovated, so I'm not too bothered about damage. Obviously, I want to keep it to a minimum, but um, and I'm hoping really there won't be a lot of damage inside. Um, but I do want to try and retain some of the nice wood on the outside, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a minute when we go out. Um, as far as the window goes, I've got the UPVC windows from a company called Chatsworth Windows in North Allen, which is just a, a local window company to me. They've been good, the casement windows come from the same place and I've had no issues with them, so um, they seem good quality windows and up to now everything's gone well, so hopefully it'll be more of the same with this. Um, to measure it, there's plenty of stuff on the internet about measuring it, but with the windows, the internal, the sort of uh, um, lengthwise measurements were all internal, so I've gone from where it touches the wall to the corner, and then corner to corner, Corners where it's just a wall again, an external uh, the height is an external measurement, and that seems pretty standard. Um, and then I sent a bit of a sketch to the window company. Um, I also use my digital angle finder, which is like five ten pounds from Amazon, um, and that told me the, the angle of the angles. So I'm gonna put it down, turn it off. And that gives you the angle, uh, which is something else the window company asked for. So I think they asked for the internal sort of length, the angle, and then I think there was a measurement from there to there that they asked for, but I mean, I don't know, different companies might ask for different measurements. Uh, but like I said, there's, there's loads of information on the internet about that, and I'd speak to your particular company. When I come to fit up the actual external still, I did make a bit of a mistake with the measurements for it, or I didn't make a mistake, but I maybe wasn't clear with what I wanted. Um, so I'll show you what I mean about that when we come up with the still in. But just, just make sure you sort of, I don't know, maybe send plenty of pictures to the company and, you know, good draw and, and double check. In my case, it was just a bit of extra silver. It was, was nothing really, a couple of extra quid to, to get it really made, but um, it, could have, it could have been worse, so I would measure and measure again type of thing. Um, so like I say, I'll show you the outside, and then I'm going to start by taking the windows out. So what I'll do is to take the windows out, the ones that hinge like this, I'll just take them out straight away. These bigger panes, hopefully they'll just tap out and prise out without damaging the glass in the middle. Most of the casement ones did, so I'll try and do that. Once I get them out, I'll probably put a couple of acro props across. I'm not really sure if this is how sort of structural it is. Um, the new window has got sort of aluminium built into the, into the sort of corners. Um, but I'm not sure when I take this out whether anything will happen with the ceiling. So just to sort of mitigate that, I've got, I've got a couple of acro props there and I'll put them in just to, to hold everything in place. Uh, Ideally, today I'd like to get this out, the new one in, maybe it's obviously not finished and stuff, but if I can get it in, um, and then it's it's secure and stuff by night, but um, the worst comes to the worst, I'll just there's nothing in it in this room worth nicking, it's, like I said, it's empty, I'll just secure that door, so it's, it's not the end of the world, but uh, we'll try and do, do that all in well. 
This is the external bit that I'm going to take out. So you can see at the top, I've burnt the wood off at the top. Um, that's because I'm going to try and retain a lot of that. So the new windows will hopefully start somewhere where the wood's burnt off the rock. So obviously all the stuff that's still white has been running out, but I'm hoping to retain some of that wood. But possibly, I'm not sure if this bit down the bottom might get retained or not. Um, so before I've started, I've re-measured the new windows just to make sure everything looks right, which it does. So like I said, I'm going to crack up and get these knocked out and then we'll go from there. So the mistake I made with the sill is, if you can see my sill, it's a three section bay window this. Um, but here on the end it sort of returns in again. The original sill I got was just like that sort of finish, so it didn't have that last returning. Um, so when the new, and apparently normally, this edge here would go up to the brick. That's what the, the window company told me anyway when I queried it. Um, and it's a bit of an odd design where it goes like this but um, so it didn't the, the original bit of sill didn't return back in I possibly could have got away with what I had but I thought for the sake of an extra know, 50 quid to get the sill remade I thought I might as well just um, get it redone so, so that's what I did so when I put the new windows in that's sort of where the new window will fit and then that'll be a I'll fill that in and that'll be a nice bit of trim up there, so that should all look good. Um, so like I said, we'll, we'll get these ones ripped out, and then we'll, we'll have a look look after that, how things are going. Now I'm just gently pricing the um, window out, just gently with a crowbar, gloves and eye protection on, just to loosen it off. So I've just gently priced it out. Hopefully I'll be able to pull it out from outside without breaking too much glass. I've put my goggles on, I mean, um, yeah, my eye protection on just in case any glass does shatter. Right, so as you can see, got all the glass out. Uh, it's pretty sure about half an hour. Um, fairly straightforward, just my chisel. These ones I didn't realise, there's hinges on this side, so at one point these must have been open, or they must have been made so they could be open on one, and then never used, whatever. Um, but anyway, they, they all came out all right. So what I've done now is I've put a couple of macro props in, I have put a thick bit of timber across the top. And like I say, <laughs> I'm not 100% sure that this is really needed. Um, but obviously I'd rather put it in and not need it than not put it in and have to rebuild a, a base. So, um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut out the timber, so cut, 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 uh, cut. I'm going to cut it over the reciprocating saw. Like this one. Um, just to keep the actual bashing about to a minimum. So I'm doing as least bashing as such, as least like really disturbing stuff as possible just to avoid like I say um, keep keep any movement to an absolute minimum and we'll just keep a close eye on on everything as I'm going but hopefully um straight forward so again got my gloves on got my goggles on um, and start cutting away and put my ear defenders down there as well but I'm not going to be doing it in short but reciprocating saw so if anybody's interested my McAllister one um, I think it was from Screwfit. It's like their own brand, I think, but it's uh, good quality and it's done loads of jobs. Just buy a decent blade, a Bosch blade in it, but uh, do a good job. So, just a bit of speeded up footage here to save you watching me mess on with the saw. But then basically, I've got the reciprocating saw and I'm just cutting all the bits of wood out. Um, like I said earlier on, my main goal is just to keep the min like disturbance to a minimum, you know, to try and avoid crack and plaster and disturbing bricks and stuff. Um, so it's usual PPE, gloves, um, high protection and if I was doing long duration I'd have me protection on as well. Um, but they're really good then reciprocating saws, I use it loads in the house for like taking out stuff and then I'd 
as a side sort of thing. I use it for cutting firewood as well. So uh, I'd recommend them if you sort of have a need for one. So I've now got the down, down sort of struts out. I've got the top bit out. Originally I was going to try and make the top bit of plaster like that in. Um, but it was cracking loads as I was taking it out. And when I've looked, the old existing framing wasn't very good. So what I'm going to do is put the new frame in and then reframe up to the to the canopy just so it's a good solid fixing from the from the new from the new window frame so you'll see that as I go um, so I'll give you a bit of a close up glance so what I've got left to do now is I'm just going to take this old this bit out like the bottom of the windowsill out and I'm going to clean up um, and then I'll have a put the frame in get the frame in roughly so I know it's in and then I'll look at sort of framing up from that so just so you can see where I'm at, I've moved the struts so it's holding the roof. Um, it's fallen over bits of glass, but I'm clean it. So like I say, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this bottom bit out. And once the bottom bit's out, I can have a good clean up. And once I've had a clean up, Look, putting the new frame in, and then we'll work from there. So I've had a good clean up now. Um, bottom bits out, top bits out. So it's ready to put the window in. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put, put the sill on the bottom. I'm going to cut it to size, and um, then put the frame in. Just sort of dry fit everything without the glass to make sure it looks like it's about right. Um, and then we'll get all sort of the, the frame screwed together. And then we'll look at how we're going to tighten with up the top here. So I'll give you a bit of a close up look um, and we'll grab some lunch and then I'll put the, the bottom bit of frame in. See now, cut that out. Big old fashioned thing there, it's a big bit of wood that. <laughs> then just from the outside. So see there. That's sort of rough layer of cement. Um uh, that might need to come out and that might need cut and flush. To fit it in, but I'm, I'm going to put it on first and just see how it goes. Uh, no real damage to the wood. There's a little bit on this side, but I've kept a bit of wood, and that'll just that'll fix back up that. So I'm not worried about that. So this bit here is the sill that's going to go in at the front. See, it's got this return on here, so originally it didn't have that, I just had that bit. Uh, I might have been able to get it to fit, but obviously the original bit does have that, so that probably just needs to cut in at a 90 from there. But I'm going to go outside and have a good look at that first, and obviously uh, I don't want to cut it wrong. So that'll be my next job, like I say, once I've had a, a drink, something to eat. Right, so you can see I've got the windowsill on there, it's just dry fitted, nothing screwed, nothing taped or out, nothing cemented. Um, I know that that inside edge needs to touch that wall, so I've gone 90 degrees cut from there, which is giving me the outside angle. And then the same on the other side. I know that I need my window to touch the wall, so I've just gone from that point, nice 90 degree cut. And that's squared it up nicely. So what I'm going to do now is just put the window on it, just stand it on to make sure it looks right and see what the height's like. And we'll go from there. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to just dry fit all the window inside. So all I've done up to now is I've literally the three sections, obviously side, middle, another side. Literally just stood it on top of the sill. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw it all together, get it all squared up on the floor and then I think the easiest way then 
will literally just be to, to sort of lift it up onto the window um, all as one big section obviously there's no glass in it so it's not too heavy um, and uh, Alicia will be back before too long so she can sort of help us um, so yeah so what I've got to do is put the metal strips in the sides so the way this goes is the narrower bit is obviously going to narrow a bit and then the trim will fix on the outside of there I put a self cotton screw through there, through there, through there and through there and that will hold it all together hopefully. So what I've had to do now is, you'll see I've had to take the top bit of wood down um, I was hoping to leave that in but when I've had, had the frame up against it it's it's not quite in the right position, it's sort of two, a couple of inches too far forward so I've took it off, I'm going to put the frame in build up another frame on the inside that will sort of like support where the wood will go and then I'll see if, if I can either reinstate the old piece of wood or I'll go and buy some new timber tomorrow um, or next week or whatever and sort of refinish it I might do it a bit of UPVC but it would be nice to keep some of the timber if I can so we'll, we'll see how it goes um, and while it's like this I'll, I'll obviously I'll, I'll insulate it up there as well before we re-plaster it um, so anyway so for now I'm going to put the frame in so I'm going to go back to my original idea I think now I'm going to put the windowsill on and then I'm just going to fix them one at a time to the to the to the sill. Um, I think it'll just be too heavy, and like you're saying before, it's sort of all toppled over when I try to do it down over. I don't want to risk damaging anything if I can help it, so I'm going to do it this way. Um, probably not the sort of the way a professional window fitter would do it, um, but for me, fitting them by myself, it's, it's the easiest way I can do it. In the screw fix. I've just got these self tap screws, 4.8 by 80 millimeter. I thought I had something down in front of them. So these are going to go through and into the metal frame, hopefully. Again, just a bit more speeded up footage this time which just show me um, fixing the windows together so like I say a uh, little pilot a uh, little pilot metal bit through um, and then I'm just using the electric screwdriver to, to put the fixings through and this is holding them all together and as I'm doing it I keep looking around just to make sure it's nicely squared up um, yeah that's so fairly fairly straightforward process so it's going from the PPC frame into like the um, alloy strut type of thing um, and just hold it all nicely together and then like I say once the trim goes on it at the end um, it looks really good so it's a fairly straightforward forward process you can see I have a little bit of <laughs> sort of movement and backwards and forwards and that but like I say it's the first bay window I've put in I put a few casement windows in before in the house um, this is the first bay window so a little bit of trial and error and I've watched YouTube videos myself just to, to see it and there's, there's some professional ones that are on there but it's obviously this is just from a DIY sort of point of view Right, so I've got the frame loosely fixed in now. Um, well, I say loosely fixed in, it's it's fixed in. Um, so along that side, there's three 150 mil sort of self tapping screws. That, that's a 100 mil one, but there's three of the 150 sort of go through at an angle. So bottom, middle, and top. Um, it's the same over here, bottom, middle, and top, and then. Along the bottoms, a couple in that section, three in the middle section, these are the 100 mil ones, um, and then a couple back in that section. So what I'm going to do now is make a bit of framing for up here. So I've got some tannalised timber, uh, and basically I'm going to cut it to the same angle as the wood, um, do a row just above the window frame, a row above the roof sort of thing, 
um, and then some struts in between the two and that'll sort of let, let it all nicely tie in and then I'll, uh, I'll clad the front of it either with the existing wood if I can sort of reclaim it or I'll get some uh, PVC sheet and or something I'll we'll worry about that when it's done but for now I'm going to get the frame and I'm going to get some timber and we chop, so chop some wood so what I've done, I've just made this bit of frame um, structural timber, uh, it's treated so I think it's like C24 stuff um, and that's going to go in up there and then the front of that can get cladded so I'll, I'll get it up there and I'll get a bit of uh, video of it so you can see from the inside I've got my um, timber in at the top now and the roof rests on that um, obviously it's got the aluminium str struts on the corners so hopefully anyway it's been taken by that rather than the windows um, so it's looking good so what I'm going to do now is screw it all in place and then once it's all screwed in place um, I'll probably put the glass in and then that'll be it for today it's probably going to take me a couple of hours to do all that um, and then tomorrow if the UPVC place is open I'll go and get some UPVC ready for the tops if not I'll just dress it with some waterproof um, membrane and then when it opens next week I'll go and get some on, I'm not sure if it's open on a Saturday or not hopefully it is and then I can get it to open I'll probably get it finished this weekend just so you can see it outside there it's, it's nice and fluffy with the plastic thread so there's just the two end bits to go on so I'm at a position now where the wind is in it's all secured um, the frame up the top's in and secured so I'm happy with that for now um, so what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to put the glass in um, and I'll protect the, protect the film I've got on the as well um, just so nothing gets discoloured and I'll call it a night for the night um, but I'll, I'll talk you through all the glass in. right so a couple of final checks um, I've just took the bead now, I've measured my diagonals um, So the diagonal measurement should be the same from side to side Put a couple of packers in, or three packers at the bottom Put the glass in, see how it sits Want it nice and evenly all the way around um, I've, I've done the diagonals on the other one, so we know they're all alright as well, so that's good. The tool I've used to get the bead now, I'll, I'll show you on this one I've got there. This tool off Amazon. Um, that's it there. I think if you Google bead removal tool or something like that, this this was about fibre I think from Amazon, but it's, it's really good, it's nice and hard. It's very thin and flat. It's good. Even then just to clip it out there. I'll get the glass and see. So just to save you the pain of having to watch me carry glass backwards and forwards for all the windows, I just included a little bit of speeded up footage just so you can see. But basically, with the ones that don't open and close, so there's no torn or healing or anything like, like that needed, just basically pack us top and bottom sides just to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Line the glass up with the rubber seal, so sort of look to make sure it looks even all the way around. And then put the the trim back in, sort of um, the trim just going in a certain order. So you just watch how you take it out and make sure you put it back in the same way. Um, and it just pushes with a firm push or a sort of a rubber mallet, sort of gently gets the trim back in. There's a open and close like this on a hinge. What we want is we torn heel it so that's about putting packers in this bottom right corner where the hinge is and the top opposite diagonal corner so we're sort of bracing it and what that is doing is going to square the window up so what I'm going to do is take the trim off I mean I'm sure if you're in the window a bit there then it's probably a job but for me it's a bit of um, try and error
So I mean that's that, that's level there. A um, little bit low in that corner. So when I'm doing the tone and the healing, we'll try and get it up on this corner, which should square it all up. So I'll uh, put the packet in on the bottom corner, and we'll go from there. I've just got this multi-packer packers from Screwfix and uh, I'm literally just going with the same colours that I used on the other side and if it's no good I'll add all tech on my ways I need them. So I'll trim a bit, see you there. Just left the one sticker on in the middle on the other side, and that's so I know that that's the outside. In fact, to take it in and out a few times, just so I don't it in the So what I'll do is I use the knife, so I'll put the packers in, the packers are now the same as the other side apart from this edge that I'm putting in. Get very careful with the knife things, so I just don't want to damage the glass. Hold the glass where I think it be. Open and shut the window to make sure I can get open and shuts properly. And just have a measure up to see if it's right. Slightly not. And then all I need is one more pack right in the top there, another black, um, and then the side to match where I've got the knife. So that's the top one. Still open and shut them all right. I'm going to have to 
not dropped or anything too much. It's spot on, sort of height wise and height wise. It's open and close, and so if I can get the packers in here to match that, uh, the other ones are blue and grey, I think, we'll go back to the good one. The other side. Which looks about right. And even on the trim, opens and shuts. Um, so I'm going to put the trim in. Still spot on, still open some closes. Um, so I'm going to take this wrapper off because it says to move immediately after installation so I think it might shun damage it if I leave it on. So I'm going to take that off, clean up, call it a day for the night. What I'm doing now is I'm just trimming up up the top there. So I've got this exterior grade ply from B&Q, it's 18mm thick this, it comes in a sheet, I think it was 2.4 by 1.2 metres. Um, but the big B&Q stars are quite good, they'll cut it down for you. So I've got them to, sh to rip it in the widths I wanted, and in this particular instance 280. Um, I've had, I'm cutting it with my miter um, saw outside so I get the angles. Um, and again, I've just used my digital angle finder to find what the angle was. So I'm just done putting it on now, so I'm going to put this ply on, um, and then I've got some nice on the trim that I'm going to put on at the top and bottom to make it all sort of match in. Then I'll treat it with a wood preserve, and then um, in the next month or so I'll also be painting it white like everything else. I'll probably do that once the building inspector signed everything off, just just in case. So what I'm doing is to initially put it on, I'm just putting on with little tack pins. Once I know it's all on, it all looks nice. I'll then go back over it and screw it on. Um, so like I say, it's not really a lot to see other than. Um, Nice thick exterior view of fly. Um, and like I say, we can live up to something that far up in it. So I just thought I'd include a little bit of footage of me um, putting the sort of finishing trim panels on, so I've put the uh, plywood sheets on. Um, I've only included this car, I haven't included it all because it's pretty much a muchness and it's fairly straightforward. Um, but you can see, just sort of measure twice, cut once type of thing. Um, there's a, I think at some point, it shows it on here, I think it does. I get the acro prop, um, just to sort of lift the full thing to only by a millimetre or so. But it just it helps a lot. So again, the old acro props, have, uh, they were a good buy. I think they were just off eBay. I can't remember how much they were, but they weren't very expensive. Got them off eBay for other jobs in the house. And I've used them quite a lot. Um, I think I'm just sort of doing a bit of fast adjustment there. And like I said, literally millimetres, but um, it's a big help using them. Um, but uh, the ply's on, just screwed in. Um, 
and then later on it sort of gets um, a wood protection on it and then uh, I put a run seal um, paint on it the top it's outside of this video but I eventually paint it with run seal weather shield paint so you can see there, I've got the board on right the way around now. And then, so what I'm going to do now is put a nice bit of trim at the top. So I've got this nice um, profile trim, this is going to go at the top. And then a little bit lower down, I'm going to put this stuff. Again, from B and Q, this is just soft wood, but I've got I've got a good quality um, like yacht varnish. I'm going to put on them, and then they will be getting painted as well in a few weeks' time. So the yacht varnish is just a sort of timing for now. And um, so I'm going to go and make them all, same as before, and I'll uh, I'll show you once I've got this on. So you can see there, I've got the top layer of trim on. Around the corner. Miters. I'm quite pleased with them, nice and tight finish. So what I'm going to do now is put the another row on along here, which should tidy it up. And then I'm going to try and get it treated tonight with the first coat of wood treatment, um, and then that'll leave tomorrow. Might look at sort of doing these edges tomorrow, but just see how we get on for time. Might do midweek. Right, so you can see I've got both lots of trim on there at the top. And I've also treated the wood with a wood treatment, I'll show you that in a minute. That goes right round. So what I'm going to do is finish with tonight is just some expanding form in that gaff. Ready for trimming up tomorrow and a bit of brickwork at the bottom. And some expanding foam in that gap. So the foam I use, the sound fill, exterior grade foam, and the wood treatment is this universal wood treatment. Um, you can see they're high performance solvent free wood preserve for treating timber, protects against wet and dry rot, prevention of um, wood boring insects sort of penetration. So. I've used that in uh, as part of the loft conversion as well. Uh, I can't I think I got that offline. It's from Tool Station. And then I've just been using the PVC cleaner, um, the glass cleaner, just to give it a bit of a clean up, just to keep on top of it. So I'll get it formed up, um, and then tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get the external bits filled, finished off, which is going to be a couple of bits of trim on the sides, uh, a bit of brickwork, and the trim on the front. And then that'll leave the plasterboard inside to finish. So you can see there, I've got the marine ply. And I've put a slither of marine ply up there. It's been treated with the wood treatment. Um, the dry and wet rot stuff and the insect boring stuff. And then I've countersunk one, two, three, four screws into it as well. They just go slightly into the frame. Um, that's on there. It's also glued on there. And then what I'll do is, it's either going to get a bit of plastic trim over the top of it or a bit of wooden beading. Um, I need to have a discussion with Alicia and see what she wants to do. So um, I'll, I'll sort of cork up along the side with um, frame seal and um, a bit of brickwork to start up down the bottom. Um, to cut this, I measured from the edge of the frame to the back of the wall. It's obviously it's slightly, I think it's 4.5 centimetres at the bottom and 4.9 at the top. So I've, I've sort of done it on a sloping thing and in the middle it's sort of slightly, a couple of the bricks must be slightly different but um, in general it's a nice clean run. Um, so I've, I've cut it at an angle, I've, that's on a 45 degree chamfer which I'll show you on this bit that I haven't put in yet. So you can see there that's got a 45 degree chamfer on it to a square edge, that's it from the front. The reason I put the 45 in on the other side is because of this lip here so with the 45 that sits nicely in there flush up against the brickwork it's a nice clean finish 
um, so that's why I've done it like that. Uh, right, so I'm going to get this bit in and then uh, have a word with the leash and see if she wants plastic on it or a wooden bead and I'm, I'm, not, I'm a bit undecided what look best. So I'm, I'm just putting this trim on now. I've um, to cut it, it's a beveled edge this. Um, I think this is 70mm or 80mm. Um, just put the head in. Cuts nice and easy with a uh, jigsaw if you've got on a flat surface. So I'll put it on backwards. Marked it down with a pencil. Cut it. And it's now the right profile. That's so what I'm going to do. Just cover it in um, Devo stick. It's not a heavy duty adhesive. Stick it on. And then sort of um, frame seal on the two edges and then that'll be it for the sealant. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to seal it up with the frame sealant. Uh, what I've done is I've put some masking tape I get on the brickwork. Um, I've put masking tape here on the um, window. I've left the Uracell film on this. I'm going to put a bead of silicon down and then sort of take the tape off and give it another rub down and hopefully that will keep it as neat as possible. So the frame sealant I'm using, I've used it on all the other windows, it's just a door and window seal and I think it's from either Wix or Screw Fix. You can see that's that side siliconed up and that's that side. Uh, I hate silicon, it's my least favourite job, I always have a chew on with it so if anybody knows any good techniques stick it in the comments below. The last step for the day is to put some trim in that bit and that bit and that's that trim there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run a bead of frame seal up here and up here just to sort of proof it a bit against wind and rain. I don't really think it needs it but I'll do it. Um, and then cut the trim to size and it just literally pops on. So you can see with the outside now we're about um, where we need to be. Trim's on, silicon up. Again, trims on silicon door. So there's a top to paint, a bit of wood filler going in the top. That's, that's sort of outside of the scope of this video. I might do a separate video where I'm showing how I repair the rotten wood. Um, so I've literally got the inside bits left to do now. This is where we're at inside. So I had some leftover sand and cement. I've just filled in along the edges there with the sand and cement. It'll be getting skimmed over and probably an edge and trim on it at a later date. Um, so the main thing I've got to do in here are the two main things. One is the windowsill. So there's a windowsill to go back on, which is there. So that should be relatively straightforward. It should just be a matter of putting it back on. It might just need trimming at the edges to fit in. And then the sealant repair, which is up there. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to insulate it. Um, yeah, insulate it, and then once it's insulated, um, plasterboard it. So again, not, not a massive job really, but um, it needs doing. It'll be a bit dark, that. There we are. So what I want to do now is finish off um, the inside of the window. So the main thing I've got to do, I've got to put the windowsill back on, which hopefully should be too much of a job. Put the trim in, um, which again is not much of a job. The, the main thing I need to do is do something with the, the roof here, the ceiling. So I'm going to start by insulating it. So these gaps here, I'm going to fill with a uh, form insulation, like a king span insulation, same stuff I use in the loft. Um, and then I'm then going to put a piece of um, form insulation covering the actual roof itself. I'll then put some pieces of timber across from this piece of timber here, which is like the old fashioned bane, across to meet the timber on the other side. And then I'll mount the ceiling to that. And we'll bring it all through at the same height. Right, so I just thought I'd show you the, well, the, the bells in the background, there's a wedding at the church over the road, so sorry about the bells. But um, you can see, I've got a, a wooden frame up there now. 
and that's level with the back of this so that comes through as one level so what I'm going to do is cut the plasterboard I'm probably going to do it in two halves so one half and the other half and um, you can see it's insulated so the insulation's on the top there that's the Celotex stuff insulation on the side there's a couple of little gaps I'm going to just put a bit of expanding foaming and I'll silver foil it and um, have lunch and then after lunch like I say I'll cut the two pieces of plasterboard and hopefully It'll be nice and uh, a nice run through. And then while I'm busy working, Holly and Alicia are just cuddling each other. <laughs> and our other dog, Honey, I don't know where she's gone now. She in the other room? Yeah, she kept barking at the wedding ball then, so <laughs> she got told off. Yeah. So you can't see, really see much of the wedding. There's the wedding car. The church just over the road there, you can sort of see the bride and the trees, but uh, I'm sure they won't appreciate me filming off it. <laughs> right, so there you can see I've got the ceiling up, so basically it was 12.5mm um, plasterboard. I've done it in three sections in the end, the, the middle section, which is a nice easy one, then the two side sections. Um, I've got a cut in. To do them I used a template just to get them somewhere near, so a big sheet of paper and just sort of drew the angle and trace that on the plasterboard and cut it. Um, I haven't shown a lot of the ceiling on this video because I've got two or three other videos on here where I'm doing ceilings and the ceiling in here actually is one of them so the plasterboard, the ceiling and um, a couple of the other rooms so I'm going to go over the same thing loads and loads so if you if you want a bit more detailed information on the ceiling have a look at my other videos. Um, but plenty of, plenty of plasterboard screws, nice firm fixing to get it to, um, plenty of screws and then I'll, I'll be getting a plaster to skim it all at the very end and I'll put the nice um, trims on the edge up here so the edge will get a nice metal trim on and they'll, they'll trim that up nicely and it'll all look nice and sharp when it's done. So obviously still got the two infills to go in there and there and the um, windowsill. Yeah, there's the bay window fully installed now. Um, so we've done a little bit of repair the woodwork outside, put the bay window in, put a nice new window board, windowsill on the inside, um, and I'm going to fill it up round it. So that's where I'm going to leave this video. Um, if you're interested in sort of seeing it fully finished down the line, if you subscribe to our channel as we decorate this room and get the room plastered and skimmed and stuff like that. You can sort of you'll see how it progresses on there but I think from this video hopefully you've got an idea of how we've installed the window. Uh, I'm really pleased with this window and it, it's gone really well. Um, this was the one that we got from Chatsworth windows in North Allerton so I'd recommend them for windows. We've had bay windows and casement windows from them. Um, I did get me patio door from a company called ATT Fabrication in Spennymoor. That's, that's not as good a quality as the windows so I probably wouldn't recommend them. Um, in hindsight, I should have probably got the patio door from the same place I got the windows from or, or somewhere else. Um, but it is what it is. Um, but as far as far as this window goes, um, all I'd, I'd say is allow yourself sort of several days for it. Um, at least a couple of days for getting the old window out and the new window in. And then I suppose once you've done that, you can sort of work at your leisure to do the finishing off, which is what I've done. I think. It was basically the best part of the day ripping it out and sort of get the new one in sort of roughly and then the next day we sort of tidying it up and then we are looking at doing sort of the fixing the faces and stuff around the outside I suppose it depends how much damage you do to stuff as you're taking your own one out as well and um, just allow yourself plenty of time um, so the final sort of stage for this I suppose in all the windows the, I'm not fencing registered it's just a DIY job so I've submitted a building notice before I started this to the council um, and they'll come round and, and sign them off um, and then if we come to sell the house down the line we know that they all comply with building regs so I think the main thing to do with them complying with building regs was the vents so the vents are in um, toughened glass and they're all fire, fire escape hinges on them um, and all the windows 
as a sin that we was put in. But I basically, when I ordered them, I said to the window company, you know, basically they need to comply with building regs. So they designed them for me so that so they would comply. So I'm hoping when the building inspector comes, there's no major issue. So if there is, I'll, I'll stick it down in the description for this video or add a little bit on the end so you know. But as it stands, um, hopefully that's it and we'll get it all signed up so thanks for watching um, please like the video if you've watched it please subscribe to the channel if you think there's a sort of a way I could have done it differently or stuff for the future because like I say it's literally just a DIY job so stick it in the comments it's always good to get some constructive um, comments about you know helps other people out as well so do do that and then um, like I say there'll be plenty more videos coming up Still loads of jobs in the house to do. Um, then we'll be decorating stuff in the garden, all sorts. It'll be plenty coming up over the next few years, so please uh, subscribe to the channel for that. Um, if you go onto YouTube and go to uh, our channel and go to videos, all videos, you should be able to get them on there, sort of chronological order from day one to current day. Um, and I think as it stands at the minute, there's maybe about 40 odd videos on there. Um, loads of different, a few tour reviews, but they're generally, um, generally just me doing bits of DIY around the house. So hopefully there might be a few, few in there that are helpful. Um, so like I say, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. So these couple of photographs at the very end, um, you can see I've just got the Ron Seal Weather Shield paint on it. It's got a 10 year warranty satisfied view of that. And then there's a quick shot of the inside, so it's just left to skim up. Um, but like always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.